Good day everybody and uh, welcome to today's episode on my YouTube video series on property uh, investment in Malaysia as well as retirement related topics in uh, Johor Bahru, uh, Malaysia. And today uh, we woke up with a very interesting piece of news that came out from Bloomberg, right? And in Bloomberg, this article was mentioned, uh, uh, Malaysia in talks with tycoons on casino to revive the $100 billion forest city project, right? Casino, yeah? So a gambling casino. So basically... Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about, uh, go through this article and the implications on this to Four City as well to, as to Iskana Putri, uh, Johor Bahru in general. So let's keep watching. So on the 25th of April today, uh, Bloomberg came out with this article. Basically, some insiders, some insiders shared with Bloomberg that uh, three people had this discussion, right? And also possibly discussion with the Prime Minister of Malaysia uh, regarding the setup of a casino, a gambling casino in Forest City, Malaysia. Now, the three people that we're talking about here, the, uh, ta uh, the Sultan of Sultan Ibrahim, which is the Sultan of Johor, um, Tan Sri Vincent Tan of the Jaya Group, as well as uh, Tan Sri Lim Kok Te of Genting Group. So let's go through these three, uh, three personalities one by one who they are. So the first one, the Sultan of Johor, I think is known to many. Uh, Sultan Ibrahim is also currently the Agong of Malaysia, right? The King of Malaysia. Now, the Sultan of Johor um, is also known for having various uh, business stakes uh, throughout Malaysia, right? He uh, has a lot of uh, small stakes here and there. Uh, various businesses across Malaysia, right? And one of them actually is uh, in Forest City itself, which he has a direct, if I'm not wrong, 20% uh, a direct share in Forest City itself. So it's also in the Sultan's uh, personal uh, interest, right, to get Forest City successful, right, because directly he has a share. The second person that we're referring to here is uh, Tan Sri Vincent Tan. Now, Vincent Tan is the uh, the, the boss of uh, Bajaya Group, which is a diversified conglomerate in uh, Malaysia. Now, Bajaya Group does everything, I think, from 7-Eleven to Starbucks to property. They're in quite a number of businesses, cars as well. Uh, yeah, across quite a number of businesses in Malaysia. Uh, Vincent Tan is uh, normally in the top 10 in terms of richest people in Malaysia, right? Uh, Bajaya, uh, Tan Sri Vincent Tan is also known to have uh, be a business partner of the Sultan, right? They have uh, some uh, business which they share together so it's not surprising that we see Vincent Tan together with Sultan on this uh, Tan Sri Vincent Tan is also known for having tried to apply for casino license before but he didn't get it right um, yeah he's tried before he has not got it uh, so far the third person is uh, Tan Sri Lim Kok Te now Tan Sri Lim Kok Te is the current boss of Genting Group yeah so which is a uh, it's also a conglomerate but primarily they are known for the casinos uh, in Malaysia, Singapore, uh, and also other parts of the world where they have, they, all, they also have casinos as well. So uh, Tan Sri Lim Kok Te is uh, the son of the founder, uh, Tan Sri Lim Kok Tong, right? Uh, currently is the big boss, right? Of course, um, everybody knows Genting, right? I think uh, Singapore and Malaysia, right? Genting, uh, not Genting, Genting, Genting is a wrong pronunciation. Genting, okay? Uh, I'm sure lots of Malaysians and Singaporeans have been to either casino, whether in Genting, Highlands itself in Malaysia, or the one in uh, Resorts World in uh, Sentosa, Singapore. So in this Bloomberg article, it was reported that these three uh, personalities were together discussing the potential of having a, a casino in Forest City, right? And uh, it's quite, and it's also mentioned that these discussions are in very early stages, and uh, they may or may have not spoken to the Malaysian government, the Prime Minister uh, Anwar Ibrahim about it, right? So uh, very early discussions, but actually it's not new. I think the 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 the, the rumor of having a casino in Forest City has been raised before many many times right i think yes the casino is one way to save forest city because casinos are well known to create a lot of uh, economic growth wherever there is one right that's why singapore have two and you know there are plans for ones uh, in, in japan and korea and other parts of the world as well because casinos not only is known for the gambling but you have other uh, ancillary uh, economic activities such as uh, conferences business conferences uh, tourism theme parks right hotels right restaurants right uh entertainment areas so this is typically what are the other stuff that's built around casinos so having a casino in Forest City will definitely improve or uh, bring lots of benefits to Forest City itself that is for sure uh, nothing to be uh, nothing to deny there right a casino in Forest City will definitely be able to pull uh, not only international uh, visitors but also uh, from the existing crowd in Genting Highlands as well as those uh, two casinos in Singapore today. The other thing, of course, that is interesting for Forest City today is that uh, there are discussions between the Singapore and Malaysian governments to make a special economic zone in Johor, right? I think I covered this in my earlier videos. And one of the proposals that we hear quite a lot about is something to do with Forest City. We are not exactly sure at this stage. Uh, some kind of financial zone, which they haven't really given details. Uh, what do they mean by a financial zone? So a financial zone plus a casino in Forest City would definitely make uh, Forest City a lot more interesting place to be. So let's talk about the risks of this uh, this uh, news, right? Of course, a Bloomberg article here has mentioned that the t these talks are very preliminary. Now, number one, I think, is 
the difficulty of getting a second casino license in Malaysia. Now, Malaysia only has one casino license, which is in Genting Highlands, owned by Genting Group. Now, uh, to have a second casino license, actually the Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim already came out in the same day today, 25th of April, to say no, no casino license for Forest City, everything is a lie, it's just a rumour, right? He has really come out publicly to say uh, there is there will not be a casino in Forest City. Well, um, yeah, prob- yeah it's, it, things may change, we don't know, right? But as, as, as of now, he's saying no, no, uh, no casino. And uh, this is because Malaysia is a, Malay- a Muslim majority country, right? There are a lot of uh, conservatives in Malaysia who do not like the idea of a second casino in Malaysia, right? Uh, gambling is prohibited in Islam, right? Uh, Muslims are not allowed to patronize casinos in Malaysia, right? So basically, it's quite a big taboo to have another casino, right? So whether the government of Malaysia uh, can push through a casino or not, or even once a casino is a very, very big question mark, no doubt a casino will generate a lot of taxes, Right for the government of Malaysia, but on the other hand, you uh concerned about social ills, and of course, again, the majority of the population uh feels that gambling is illegal in the first place. So, um, very difficult to say whether a second casino license can be approved. I think this is the biggest hurdle ever for for this to happen in Forest City. Number two is. Actually, the major uh, owner of Forest City is Country Garden. Now, Country Garden is a Chinese property developer in China. That, as uh, most of you may know, actually, the Chinese economy is in a not so good shape now, especially the property sector. Now, many property developers in China are facing high debt, right? Uh, in China, and uh, inability to repay their their debt, right? Now, Country Garden is uh, one of them, which is in quite serious trouble. Actually, if you pay attention to the public listed listings from Country Garden, right, they have a lot of problems in paying back some of the bond, uh, bond interest that they had to pay. So I feel that Country Garden, as an entity, as a private business, to as ability to push for city further, that risk is there. Uh, and I don't see how Country Garden can have a lot of capital to push this, right? Even if they have money to pay the operations in Forest City, right? Which is true. Actually, if you go to Forest City today, right, uh, the, it's, the grass is still cut. They're still cleaners. The streets are clean, right? Uh, things are still running. There's a duty-free center there, which uh, you can go and buy cheap duty-free alcohol, right? Uh, you There is an American school, which is still operational. Actually, quite a lot of students. So in that sense, Forest City is still functional. Everything is completed there so far, right? Uh, there's no abandoned building in Forest City, like, right? But of course, occupancy is low, probably 10 to 15% occupancy. But if you consider that Forest City has 40,000 apartments, right? 10 15% is, you're talking about 40 to 60,000 uh, families or residents, which is a lot, yeah. Uh, no, 4,000, yeah. 40,000 times uh, 10%, yeah. 4,000, so not 40,000. 4,000, 6,000 residents in Forest City, which is not a small figure, right? If you think about it, Forest City is a mini town in itself. Of course, yeah, occupancy is low. Uh, we don't deny that. But um, like I said, because the parent company, Country Garden in China, is in trouble, so we at this stage, I think in the short term, it's very difficult to assume that Country Garden can pump a lot of capital for Forest City to push forward. So I think it depends a lot on their partners, maybe the Sultan of Johor, the government of Malaysia, and maybe any other private partner they can pull in right, to push uh, Forest City further. That's why maybe with a casino license, they hope to get other big players like Genting to come in and push, right? And with the uh, special economic zone, the financial center, some some other third party private companies will come in to help and push uh, for a city. So I, I think it's the direction that Country Garden will have to look at because they themselves, I think right now, probably don't have the capital to push for a city further. So that's my opinion why I think uh, for a city is also difficult. So overall, my whole opinion of for a city is basically on, on, on this issue that... Um, uh, it's still very speculative to invest in Forest City, right, or to buy property in Forest City, unless you really, really buy for own stay, you'll like it uh, for whatever reason, right? Uh, Forest City uh, is a very, very highly speculative product right now, right? Although there are some stories that may point to a revival, like high-speed rail, special economic zone, this casino, right? I think uh, still a lot of big risks to be had. So I don't typically recommend for City as an investment property, right, uh, to people out there, right? And uh, the casino, well, positive news, right, is still a very, very big question mark. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope that uh, sharing was useful to you. And if you find my YouTube entertaining or interesting, please like, share and subscribe. Click subscribe and like.
right? And uh, share this with your friends and families who are interested who, in uh, following more news about Malaysia property or Malaysia retirement in general because I think it's a very big topic today. As I cover in all my videos, our, our subscriber base is up. A lot of people text me every day for questions uh, and for help. And a lot of people are buying property in JB right now. Uh, sales in JB is not bad, actually. So uh, if you're keen to find out more, uh, do follow my YouTube channel and uh, hope to see you guys soon. And any questions, feel free to ask on my comments below and uh, we can always check on the YouTube uh, comments. Thank you very much and bye-bye.